working from home. They said it would be fun. They said it would be exciting. They said it would be relaxing, being at home and chilling out and doing your job and avoiding commute times. But then, then you started doing it, you realize your world is in pieces. You're exhausted. The family hates you. Maybe your dog disowned you. I'm just kidding, maybe they didn't. But <laughs> this is a real thing. Working from home is a massive challenge. Everything changes. And if you don't structure it right, everything falls apart. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can restructure your day working from home and actually be able to achieve much more than you did when you weren't. And we're gonna start right now. Well, hello everybody, I'm Dr. Glenn Harrison and welcome to this week's segment of Why. This is where we take just a few minutes to answer some of the most common health-related questions that I see in my office every day. If this is the first time you're on the channel and you wanna learn more health-related strategies and tricks and tips, make sure you click subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss, miss any because over the weeks and months, we throw more and more content your way that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. So, working from home, it seemed like it would be a great idea and now we're deep into it maybe months, maybe, maybe a year, maybe weeks, and it isn't what it was all chalked up to be. Our worlds are in pieces, our, our, our lives are in pieces. What can we do? How can we, how can we get our lives back? We're tired, we're exhausted, there's no structure, we don't have any free time, it's chaos. I get this question so often, that's why I'm making a video and I'm gonna give you some tools to help you with this because I've, I've dealt with it myself, I've lived it. So what can we do? What can we do? The biggest thing with working from home is to get structure back. And when we're in an office setting or we're, we have to make it to a certain location for our jobs and our employer is holding us accountable, it, it is, we, just, we just go through the motions. But when we're working from home, there's all these distractions, there's, there's accountability, there's all of these things. And if it's not perfectly put into place, if you don't have the structure, everything else goes out the window. So what can we do? Well, there's a few things. Structure, 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 okay? It's gonna take some discipline, but the payoff's gonna be huge. You'll have more time than you ever thought you could have. It almost seems it's impossible, but I'll show you. So the first thing you wanna do is take advantage of your calendar. Okay, your calendar is for you. Now we're all carrying around cell phones, right? We all, or, or some, whether, whether it's a cell phone or paper or whatever, your calendar can be there. So that calendar is gonna be the most important thing to this whole story. The first thing you're gonna do, there's gonna be a few major pillars of, of structure that you're gonna put in your day, okay? These are, these are the most important things ever. One thing you're gonna put on your calendar is your wake up time. Your wake up time is not optional. Every time your calendar says you have to be somewhere or do something, you do it, you stick to it, and you are gonna get amazing results. So your morning, just like your alarm clock, that's gonna be your morning. You're, so that's one thing. I'm, I'm gonna get you to stop this video, write this down, because if you don't put this into place, nothing's gonna change. Don't let this just be another video where you're gonna listen to it. Pull out a piece of paper, pause it. Okay, there we are, now you're back. So the first thing you put on your calendar is when you're gonna wake up. That's okay, that'll be your alarm clock or whatever. The second thing you're gonna put on your calendar is your start to your work day. You might be home from home, working from home, but you gotta set it up like a normal work day. So that's number two. Number three is going to be your lunch break. Yes, you're home, but you need a structure. You need a structured lunch break, whatever that is. It should be a minimum of a half hour. Okay, so that's the third thing you're gonna put in there. The fourth thing you're gonna put in is the end of your day. The problem with working from home is you can work forever. I've done this, and then it gets so late, and then everything just gets thrown out. So the fourth thing is the end of your day, whenever that is. The fifth thing, is going to be bedtime. So five pieces you're gonna put on your calendar, okay? These things are not optional. Not optional whatsoever. They're the most important thing. The, the biggest thing that I've made, problems, and I see other people, they put too much in their calendar. The type A personalities think they can get too much done. Well, you'll get overwhelmed. Your calendar will beep, your notification will beep to whatever you have to do, uh, and you dismiss it. And then the next time it beeps, it doesn't mean anything. And the next time, and then the calendar is gone. So just these five things, okay? Of course, you're gonna, you're, you know, from the time you wake up to the time you start work, you have to allow enough time to have breakfast or do whatever routine you do in the morning, okay? But those five things, that's number one. This is so important, okay? 
Um, the next thing, again, like I stress, don't break the rules of the calendar. They're the most important thing, okay? Another thing to recognize and to implement this calendar strategy is accountability. Now, if we're in an office setting and we have peers and we show up late, there's negative repercussions, social repercussions, if not employment repercussions for it. But when we're home, we might still be in our PJs, looking at a computer, grogging around with our coffee in our hand, never ate, woke up late, didn't even have a chance to brush our teeth, all that stuff. I've been there. <laughs> okay, I've been there. So don't be like that. Put the structure in place and you'll do it. Now, the challenge with doing anything is for some reason, humans have a hard time to be accountable to themselves. It's easier to be accountable to a boss, a friend, family member, anybody. So you have to find an accountability partner. Now, this is gonna be a neutral individual, someone who's not gonna judge you, probably not a family member or a significant other. I highly recommend finding an accountability partner. Now, I did a whole video with my colleague, Dr. Colby Condos, where we, we talked about accountability partners. We did a video on our sister channel to this called Brainstorming with the Docs. There's gonna be a link below, and it's a really, really interesting in interview in this where we kind of talk together because he is my accountability partner. I hold him accountable for what he's gonna do. He holds me accountable for what I'm gonna do. We have check-ins once a week. Highly recommend get an accountability partner and let them know what you want to achieve. And this is your calendar. This is gonna be one of those things. And tell everybody in your house what you're doing because if they're not doing it, you'll know that they're gonna look at you strange if you're not doing what you say you're gonna do. That'll also help. So get that accountability partner, watch the video below on accountability. It will help. This is so powerful, okay? Been, it, it's been life-changing for me and Dr. Colby and anybody I know who's had one. You, the, the, another thing about this structure and your work environment, now either you're at home, there's a million distractions. They're everywhere and you have to make a conscious decision to remove those distractions. So if you have a room, an office at your home, this is ideal because, it, this is ideal because you keep all your work stuff in your work room. What you wanna do is establish ex specific work home boundaries and it's easier to do that if you have a room for that where you, you don't let the computer sneak out you don't let any papers or documents or any work related reminders of anything they cannot get out of that room i really mean it this is what i had to do and i teach my clients to do this as well keep it in there that's their best and never violate that rule that's number one with your workspace. Number two, if you don't have a workspace, it makes it a little harder, but you can still do it because I have clients that do this as well. If they're working at to say their kitchen table or their coffee table in their living room or something, just, just the way the situation is. Still follow your calendar and then when you are on break, when you are on lunch break, when you're before the end, before at the end of your day, I should say at the end of your day, close everything up, your computer, all your books, all your files, everything. Put them out of sight. If you see anything related to work, task lists, sticky notes, any of that craziness, any books, it will put you, it'll put you in work mode and you will never get true removal between home and work. These take a conscious effort, okay? But it is very powerful because people get burnt out because they never unplug when they're at home. It wasn't that long ago, tech companies, this is an interesting story, tech companies were paying, and maybe there's still some of them are still doing it, they were paying their tech employees to go on, they would pay their whole vacation if, if they didn't go online, okay? So they were able to see they were more productive when they fully unplugged. So work removal, workspace removal and design, designated home life, work life. You've done it with your calendar, now you have to do it with your space, okay? And those are some strategies, separating that, those two worlds. Another thing is, and this is much more challenging, parents, moms specifically, I've worked with a lot, that are career moms and, and they, some of them are single moms and now they've got the kids at home. So now they're taking care of the kids, they're trying to do their work from home and they're trying to take care of home all at the same time. Way too many hats, okay? Is there a strategy to navigate around that? I think the structure is most important. Depending on how old the kids are, you wanna give them even more responsibility to be on their own. You're gonna need some help. You're gonna to have to reach out to friends and family. There's only so many hats you can wear, but maintain the calendar, maintain the structure as much as you can and get help because you, you will burn out. And what'll happen is once you burn out enough in your home life, because usually we have separation from work and home, but you start burning out in your home life, everything will fall apart. Your workouts will fall apart. Your health strategies will fall apart. Your, your, you will fall apart. Don't let this happen, 
Okay. So hopefully this was helpful. I know I struggled for, oh, I would say every bit of a, every bit of a month when I, when I fully adapted to 90, I think we're 99% remote now working from home. But once I mastered it, it's remarkable. At lunchtime, I'll sit on the deck with my dog. I'll throw the ball for him. I'll have, I'll have lunch outside. I don't have any commute times. It's beautiful. Um, at the end of the day, um, I don't have a commute time. I have more time to go walk with my dog. Um, I can do all of those things. I can relax at home, but I maintain my structure. And you will, you will, you will have more time in your day, believe it or not. So anyway, hopefully this was helpful. I know the work-life balance is a challenge, but if you're disciplined, it, it, you, will, you will learn to love it. So with that being said, I'm Dr. Glenn Harrison. I, hopefully this was helpful, and I look forward to talking to you next day. Have a great day.